recording. Hi, my name is Dave Lefkowitz, and so many of you not only know me, but you're my friends, and uh, hopefully you believe I'm your friend. And uh, I am the Assistant Superintendent of the Louisiana Department of Education, um, focused these days uh, largely on the CTE Leadership Academy that I would be happy to talk more about at any time now during this webinar or in the future. I have everybody on mute because with over 50 people now participating, if I didn't put everybody on mute, it would be very loud and difficult for you to hear me. But I just ask if uh, one or two of you, well, anybody who feels moved can just type in the chat box that you can hear me, I'd be grateful. And that way I know that I'm coming across and I think you can see me as well. I got those really attractive reading glasses on. Okay, great. Um, and I'm not too loud. I hear every day that I talk too loud. All right, thank you, Allison. Um, all right, uh, the objective of the call today is to discuss the Career Development Fund Technical Assistance Review, a report that we sent out a couple of weeks ago, to talk about what our findings were, and then to talk about next steps. Everybody, I hope, on the call knows that the Career Development Fund is a, a unique funding mechanism, unlike any other state, where districts and charter schools can generate completely incremental, completely new levels of CTE funding every time one of their students is registered in a course that's on the Career Development Fund or the CDF list. And the current funding level is $238 per student per credit. It's completely unlimited. And moving forward, 70% of the funds are gonna be paid in August. This year, there was a little bit of a hiccup. So some were paid in August, and the excuse me, July. Some were paid in July, some in August, the balance in September. But you're gonna get the, the bulk of those funds up front to invest in the new school year. And then the balance of the funds do you based on actual enrollments in February or March, depending on how quickly we can calculate actual enrollments. We, we did this technical review because it was our impression from a variety of sources that there were districts and schools that were not necessarily using CDF funds in the appropriate ways. And so we completed this review, but before I go to the review findings, let me tell you two rules that guided this review. The first rule would be we are not here to penalize or sanction anybody. This was not a review like an audit where negative findings trigger negative consequences. I'm not interested in that, frankly. What this was about was testing to see if there were districts where the CDF funds weren't being used appropriately, or as we found, weren't being used at all, and then how we can move forward so that these funds are actually dedicated to increasing student opportunities. So those were the two rules, no penalties and a focus on student opportunities. If you guys, can I see from somebody, can you see the report on my screen? Just somebody say yes. You can't hear me anymore. I hear somebody chatted that can't hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. So if the person who can't hear me, I would ask you to, to call back. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, the key findings are summarized on this table in the front. And, um, whoops, I'm trying to make it so I can see it better. Um, since the CDF mechanism was instituted in 2014, 2015, almost all of you on the call have in one way or another used CDF funds for ineligible expenditures. There's a document that's attached to this report that's updated annually that talks about what allowable expenditures are. Uh, broadly speaking, they are for um, funding or sustaining high demand pathways, teacher training, credentialing costs for statewide pathways, transportation for students to opportunities to participate in high demand pathways, NEPRIS licenses, and upon approval, JAG. But in a lot of cases, it turned out that schools and districts use them inappropriately. 
that's okay. We're not going to look back. No one's going to get penalized for trying to do the right thing. The second finding is the most important finding. And the second finding is, when I say select districts, it's actually a majority of districts have enormous carryover balances of CDF funds, while at the same time indicating a lack of funding for expenditures that would be appropriate uses of CDF funds. For example, statewide IBC testing and credentialing, you can read it right there. And it's apparent now that in too many LEAs, there is little or no communication between the finance team and the CDE, CTE leaders about the receipt and use of CDF funds. So this means that business managers are not entirely clear about the restrictions on how CDF funds may be used, or in some cases, even how much they've received in CDF funds. And CTE leaders don't know how much their LEA has received in CDF funds and what approvals they have to spend these funds. So in some cases, the business managers aren't even realizing that they've gotten this different class of funds that has specific, specified, limited uses by law. It's what they call a tier four funding stream. It must be used for the specified purpose. When CTE leaders don't even know, hey, I'm supposed to have all this money to spend and I don't have access to it. So we've attached in this PDF, and if you want it, we can send it to you as an Excel file, all of the CDF funding by LEA, by district, since its inception in 2014-15, the amount that each of you indicated when, or in some cases, if you filed your year-end report for CDF, and then how much in carryover balance you have. Now, it's okay to have a carryover balance. This is not one of those funding sources where you have to spend it or lose it, because that tends to lead the that, that, that tendency, it, when you have a funding source like that, it leads to bad decisions. So you can carry it over if you have a plan. But what we're concerned about is there are some districts where the carryover ba uh, balance is enormous, and there's no real good justification for that. And so what we want to do moving forward is work with the almost 40 districts that have very high balances of CDF funds that are carried over from prior years. 50,000 and above, and ask them, okay, what are your plans in the coming year to spend these funds appropriately? So if I go to um, the bottom of the report, based on uh, feedback from the districts, the Jumpstart team has enhanced the CDF year-end report spreadsheet so that the Jumpstart team will now send to each district their carryover balance as of on or about June 1. And the year-end report now automatically calculates the imputed carryover amount based on what you're reporting as your expenditure. So you can know, based on what you've spent, whether or not you have a carryover balance that needs to get spent. We'll also make available on the CT Leadership Academy website, www lactleaders.com, tools for managing your CDF allocation. We have a tool that for a district and for each of the high schools in a district can model, can do a sensitivity analysis on how you're spending your CDF funds and whether or not that's uh, equal to the amount that you have available to you. It can also indicate the impact that that expenditure will have, all other things being equal, on your school and district accountability scores. And so if you go to the www.lacteleaders.com website, uh, you can find, you, can, you have to register, but then you can find those tools. And if you can't find the tool easily, there's a help function there. Just say to the help function, please send me the, the spreadsheets that help me uh, manage my CDF allocations, do some what we call enterprise financial modeling, and then, um, you'll have the ability to determine the best use of your CDF funds in terms of maximizing student opportunities, maximizing the number of high value IBCs that your students uh, attain, and then maximizing your school and district accountability score. Now the yellow box at the bottom is the one message that I will send that's um, the message that a regulator sends, you know, and that is, the LDOE has the right and reserves the right to reclaim unexpended or improperly expended CDF funds based on the guidelines for the use of CDF allocation. But that's not our goal. It's not our intent and it's not what we want to do. So we're giving 
all the districts this entire school year to understand the CDF funding mechanism, to have school, uh, to have district CT leaders talk with their business managers on how much money has been received and how those funds must be expended. And to give you guys the opportunity to make solid plans and implement those plans so that you maximize student opportunities without any penalty or sanction. Very quickly, the next couple of pages on this report are that uh, memo on guidelines for use of the CDF allocation. And I can answer any questions on what our allowable use is. I'm scrolling down. And then you see the spreadsheet there for each of you that shows the first page is for 2014 to 2016 17, what your allocation, expenditures, and carryover balance was for each year. And then on the second and fourth pages, it shows what your current carryover balance is as of 2017, 2018. Okay, so I can see people hear me because I got a great question. And of course, I got a great question from one of my toughest uh, colleagues and critics, but also a friend, Therese. Can uh, we use CDF to pay for substitute teachers for teacher trainings during the school day? Uh, I haven't heard that question before, but I would have to say yes. If that's a way that a teacher gets trained during the school day, and the school still needs to have somebody uh, attend uh, to that class, then that would be an acceptable use of CDF funds. And I will uh, confirm that with my colleagues and we will add that to the uh, memo so that that's clear. Uh, so that's the first question that was chatted. Any other questions? Can you hear me now? Stacy, can you hear me now? I think I muted myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, if my wife knew there was a mute button on Lefty, she would pay you guys a billion dollars for that. We may have just, we may have just cured cancer. Okay, in any event, um, uh, CDF funds may only be spent on uh, high demand, high value pathways and that's defined as pathways that result in a statewide uh, IBC, either basic or advanced. So if a teacher were going to customer service training, for example, for that IBC, you couldn't use the money either to train the, the teacher or to pay for the um, uh, substitute. But if you sent that teacher to welding training, uh, then you could. Good question, Angela. Um, so I muted myself, now I gotta figure out a way if there's a way I can unmute you guys. Nope, that won't do it. Any other questions? Lefty, can we pay for IBCs and trainings that lead to a statewide, for example, post-art managers? Yes, you can pay for the cost of those credentials, for the cost of, those, of that testing for the students. So yes, you absolutely can. Yes. Thank you, Therese. Any other questions? If we were looking on a long-term plan to improve a facility, can we carry over funds for multiple years if we turn in a plan to the DOE? An example would be to redo welding labs. That is, Chris, that is a brilliant question because there's a very fine distinction here. And I'm glad I have the opportunity to make that distinction. Um, first of all, the, the answer is yes. I mean, we're reasonable people who respond predictably well to any reasonable plan. But CDF funds may not be spent on capital, on buildings. They can't be spent erecting a new building. That has to come from the capital budget of your, of your district. But for example, the specific example I like to use is if you're modernizing a welding lab, uh, a, a, a welding facility by putting in new booths, by putting in new ventilation, by putting in new welding machines, 
those expenditures are are great use of CDF funds and can absolutely be the basis upon which you say to us, we're carrying over our funds to next year so we've accumulated enough funds to do the whole job. So Chris, I hope that's an authoritative answer. It's an emphatic yes. Okay, just want to reiterate that we can use CDF to pay for construction and upgrades to classrooms and shops and high wage, high demand pathways. You can use those for equipment, but not for structures. So I hope that's clear. You can't build a new building and say, okay, that's going to be our CTE building. It'll have some high demand pathways in it. We're using our carryover funds for that. You cannot do that, but you can outfit that building with the equipment you need for those pathways. And that is an allowable use of CDF funds. So I hope that's, um, useful. Where were the funds released in July? My finance manager said we did not receive them. So there was a little bit of a hiccup. When I say that the, the finance people and the CTE people are, don't communicate in districts, well, you know, we're not immune to that in the Department of Education. You guys received one twelfth of your uh, last year's CT, uh, CDF funding in July. I believe in August you received the balance of what would have represented 70%. If you didn't receive that in August, you'll receive it in September. But the plan moving forward will be 70% in July, the balance in, um, in March, February or March when the actual accounts are in. So if your finance manager is having a hard time finding them, tell them that they may have only gotten one twelfth in July, but then look for the bigger payment in August. So a student to earn entrepreneurship statewide, they must earn the regional credential. Can we use the CDF for that as long as it's leading to a statewide credential? That's a very slippery slope. What I would say is if you're training a teacher and that teacher gets both the um, regional and statewide, then that would be allowable. If that student is earning both the regional and statewide microenterprise credential, you could only pay for the testing and the credential costs of the statewide microenterprise, not the regional. Many of the courses that are on the Jumpstart Pathway towards a statewide credential include courses with complementary credentials, for example, customer service. Principals, of course, want to offer such courses as we earn CDF for these courses. Well, God bless their hearts, they should. So if you're telling me that a student can take a course that's on the CDF list and by taking that course, earn one or more complementary credentials like an OSHA credential, a safety credential, or a customer service credential, that's a good thing. You don't get penalized because the students are accomplishing more. So I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly, Christy, but um, that is absolutely an allowable use of the CDF funds. When using CDF funds to pay for training, would a district be able to use it for the micro-regional training? No, no, I, I think I just answered that one. Um, they only if the teacher goes and gets the statewide training, and then uh, if there's one cost for both, then you can deduct that cost, but if there's a separate cost, then they can only deduct the cost of the state training. Can we use CDF to pay stipends to teachers for training that occur after regular school hours? No. No CDF funds may be used to pay teachers. To be, to be clear, adding welding booths to an existing shop is acceptable. Yes, to be absolutely clear, welding booths is acceptable, new welding machines is acceptable, upgrades or replacement of the ventilation system is, is acceptable or, or uh, capital maintenance. Uh, Jerry Lane gave me a paint booth. I want to start a collision repair program. Need to construct a metal building. No, unfortunately, that would be no. No, but you can um, find other ways to spend that, uh, those funds. Um, we just can't have them go to buildings because the problem with that is then it's not going to really maximize student opportunities. It's, it's a very narrow investment. Buildings really should come out of the capital budget for the district. We've started dual enrollment welding and industrial maintenance classes at LDCC. Can we purchase textbooks and supply student needs for these classes? If that helps them pursue a high uh, value pathway? Yes, absolutely. What areas are covered by medical? I think you, if you go to the, um, the pathway, uh, the health sciences pathway, it'll show you the um, high demand statewide IBCs and then anything pursuant to it, attaining that high value IBC. And uh, the, I think the new one is the patient care technician, uh, but you'd have to go back and check that. I, I can't do this from memory because I'm just too darn old, but um, any, anything pertaining to that would be useful. Uh, could these Q and A's be captured uh, for some way for future reference? I think it would be probably incumbent upon me to uh, write these up and send them out to everybody. Uh, would anybody like uh, to have that? If I do that, would that be a good thing? 
So I see, no, 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 nobody wants it. Okay, no, nobody wants it. Okay, well then I won't do it. Yes, I'll do it. Um, are you also tracking charter schools that are, have their own LEA? Yes, we are. And the reason we didn't include uh, charter schools in this call was because it, th there are so many of them. And um, quite frankly, some of them uh, uh, got funds and then no longer are in operation. Others are just new startups. In fact, this issue is very real among the charter schools. But again, we're not going to assess any ex post facto penalties. So no one's going to get assessed a penalty for something that's come before. We've decided that that would not be productive. It wouldn't build a partnership that we're looking for between the department and charter schools and districts. But moving forward, if a charter school doesn't understand how to do this, they have two sources of information. One is your charter school association, which is full of very well-informed people who can and will help you. Or you can contact jumpstart at la.gov. All right, if a student earns a P in a class that has CDF funds attached, does the district still earn CDF funds? For example, students taking Ag 1 and receive a P in NCCR car once they receive the credential. I'm not sure what a, a P is. Is that a pass? But the answer is yes. CDF funds are paid on enrollment. So if they're not paid on grades. Um, so good questions, good questions. Uh, any more questions? This is this chat function works well, and I'm sorry that no one else is getting to talk other than, than me. Uh, let me offer an unsolicited piece of advice. Um, I think if I were a CTE leader, I would reach out to my finance manager today with this report and say, can we please track the CDF funds we've been receiving, and can we mutually collaborate, please, on a plan for how we spend these productively in the future? so that you clearly indicate your awareness that these CDF funds have a, a, a mandatory use to expand student opportunities for high value pathways, and that your business manager starts working with you to do that. Now, if you're a business manager on this call and you wanna be really just spectacularly client oriented, I would reach out to my CTE leader and probably my superintendent and say, look, we have this funding source. It must be spent in a certain way. The State Department has been very much into partnership not penalizing anybody who may have done it wrong in the past, but in the future, we're gonna to have to use these funds in the way of which they're mandated to be used. Let's figure out the best way to do that. And maybe let's have the CTE leader go to the LACTLeaders.com website, download that enterprise planning uh, spreadsheet and figure out how we can make expenditures that not only maximize student achievement, but also increase our uh, district and schools accountability scores. If a student takes a CDF course more than once, do we get funds more than once from that student? What exactly are you suggesting? That the students uh, take the course, fail it, take it again? Um, I don't, I don't want to entertain that scenario. I, I, that's a, you, a student gets registered in the course, you guys get paid the CDF funds, the student succeeds. Do they read the transcript or the schedule to determine the CDF funds? P means proficient. Thank you, uh, Josh. Um, I'll have to ask our data people, but my understanding is that they read schedules. It's enrollment. It's not completion. Can we get extra CDF money if we are spending? <laughs> no, unfortunately, we don't, uh, uh, we, we don't want to take money from one district and give it to another because uh, if the district hasn't um, spent the money, we want those students to have the benefit of that money. So no, we're not gonna be reallocating those funds, but it's a good try, it's a good try. For the, um, the, the schools, the districts that don't spend, the, the charter schools or districts who don't spend their CDF funds at the end of this year, uh, haven't uh, submitted uh, a CDF annual report showing why they're carrying it over, like Chris was saying earlier about their great plan to modernize their welding facility. If you, if you haven't spent your money, if you haven't submitted a year-end form, and there's no apparent plan for using the money, we'll take them back as, as is a forward, we have that uh, right under the MFP. So again, it, CDF funds are based on student enrollments, not student achievement, student enrollment. All right, so we're five minutes from our uh, allotted time. Um, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't figure out how to unmute everybody, although that would have been probably just really loud. Uh, there, we are a second year school. Is there such a thing as retro funding, retro funding CDF aligned courses? I suspect not. The written hand, once having written, moves on. Um, 
you can send an email to jumpstart at la.gov asking for that uh, because um, I, I got married to a spectacular woman because I asked her. Uh, if I hadn't asked her, she wouldn't have said yes. Having said that, I had a lot of women say no to me too. And I think that's the sort of question where somebody would say no. So, but, you know, again, we're not telling my wife about that mute button. What gets said on a webinar in Louisiana stays on a webinar in Louisiana. <laughs> um, any other questions? Three more minutes. Has this been useful? Can somebody please just let me know, has this, have I addressed issues and questions that will make it better for you guys moving forward? Okay, so I see a couple of yeses. Hello, Felicia. Um, so let me end with two thoughts, please. One is, um, I have been thrilled to serve the state of Louisiana and all of you for the last six, almost seven years. Um, but uh, there's a much bigger department than just Dave Lefkowitz. And anytime you guys need a question answered on any issue, jumpstart at la.gov is a wonderful way to contact us. And one of your own, Jessica Villalongo, is now a member of the Jumpstart leadership team. And she will be one of the people answering those questions from the very practical perspective of having done your work for the last several years of her career. So, you know, a lot of you still contact me directly, and I'm now forwarding all of those emails over to jumpstart at la.gov. You can always contact LA, jumpstart at la.gov to answer any of your questions. Before I give my second ending point, there's another question from somebody I like. If the NCCER carpentry instructor wants to have his NCCER carpentry students complete a, state, a school wide project and the work will be completed by students and the supplies will be purchased from Lowe's, can CDF funds be used from this project? If those supplies are part of a pathway where students can earn a statewide IBC, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. So again, we're reasonable people. We love kids just like you love kids. We all want what's best for those kids. If your well-intended teachers are coming up with creative projects that result in students earning high demand, high value IBCs that set them up for adult success, of course we're gonna support that. All right, so the first piece of ending advice I gave you is uh, contact jumpstart at la.gov. The second piece of advice I'm gonna give you is we are now deep into the first training cohort of the CTE Leadership Academy. And there are 32 people now active in that academy. It's very hard. You can ask anybody who's doing it. It's very hard. The standards are very high. It's a lot of work. So nobody should think about going into that effort casually. But after the Jumpstart Convention next year, we're gonna open up the application portal again, and we're gonna be taking applications for a second cohort of CTE leaders. If you know a teacher or a counselor or any educator who wants to know more about CTE and potentially one day become a gifted CTE leader, tell them to go to the lacteleaders.com website to learn more about the Academy. And all of you, who think there might be tools there that can help you run your district more effectively, your school more effectively, go to lacteleaders.com and learn about what that website, those resources can do for you. So I'm glad that we have one district that's gonna have a, a welding lab modernization, that's great. Uh, I have one of the participants in the, in the academy saying it's a lot of work, but you do learn a lot. And they will tell you that I'm the person who gives a lot of the feedback and I'm a tough guy. So don't think it's all puppy dogs and cotton candy. It's tough, but hopefully it's the sort of tough work that results in a real blossoming of your capabilities. All right, so uh, I like to be uh, respectful of people's time. If you have any additional questions, please contact jumpstart at la.gov. Uh, save the date, save the date. I believe the Jumpstart Convention is on um, January 29th of next year. Uh, somebody can confirm that. It's the Tuesday of that week. I, I can't find it on my computer because I, I, it's, it's acting weird. But I hope to see everybody at the Jumpstart Convention next year. And I look forward to continuing our work together. To, uh, it is January 29th. January 29th. Thank you. Um, and that's a Tuesday, correct? Tuesday, January 29th. The person who's uh, texting me or chatting with me. Tuesday, January. Thank you. So I hope to see you all in Baton Rouge on uh, Tuesday, January 29th. Uh, thank you all for attending today's uh, webinar. 
Uh, for those of you with ultra high balances, I am going to be contacting you and asking you for your plans and looking for a collaborative. Lefty's buying dinner on the 28th. <laughs> okay, if you can prove you're on this webinar, you got a chance. And um, I am going to be contacting all of you. So if you look on this spreadsheet and you see that you have an ultra high balance, get ready. The call is coming. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.